Hey guys, welcome back to Magic TV. My name's Craig, it's nine o'clock. It is a Monday, it's time for a five by five. Now, if you don't know what the five by five series is, basically the whole idea is I talk about five different subjects in magic. I give myself five minutes to talk about each subject. There is a timer at the bottom. When the timer reaches zero, I move on to the next subject. So it's quick, it's snappy, and you never know what you're gonna get. However, today you will know what you're gonna get because today it is a coin magic special. A couple of weeks ago, I put up a coin magic special on five by five. It was incredibly popular and it was the five tricks that I thought the beginners should learn first in order to get good at coin magic. You see, I'm on a mission to try and get more magicians to do coin magic and that was really well received. I've had messages from magicians saying how much they it helped their coin magic and they've been studying the routines that I showed, which was amazing. So today we're going to do a follow-up video for that. I'm going to do a couple of them over the next few weeks, uh, but this is going to be looking at slightly more difficult routines. Let's call them intermediate. So if you haven't seen the beginner one, if you've never done coin magic before and you haven't seen uh, the first video yet, go and have a look at it. Uh, it's five tricks that I think beginners should learn. Uh, this one is going to be intermediate, so it's going to follow on from that one. If you've never done coin magic before, hey, it's still a great video to watch. But if you have done coin magic and you've, uh, you've been doing coin magic for a while, these are the next five routines that I think you should learn. I'm going to perform them. I'm going to be talking about them. I'm going to be telling you why they are so great. So without further ado, let's have a look at the first trick. Right, okay, so the first trick we're going to be looking at is Sonic Squeeze by Michael Lamar. Uh, when you start doing coin magic and you kind of do more and more coin magic, you want to have a coin production. What I mean by coin production is a way of producing coins. Now, most coin routines use three or four coins. So you want a coin production that can, that can basically make three or four coins appear from thin air. And there's lots of different ways of doing this, and we're going to be examining a lot of different ways over the coming weeks. But for me, one of the first things that you should look at is Sonic Squeeze by Michael Amar. Now, this first appeared, or the, well, actually, it's much longer than that, but the first place I learned it was Michael Amar's Easy to Master Coin Magic series that came out many, many years ago. I think I got them on VHS tape. That's how old we are. Uh, but it's great. Now, um, by now, if you're watching this video, you should have mastered, or maybe not mastered, but you should have learned Classic Palm which is obviously the ability to hold a coin right there. What Sonic Squeeze needs you to do is uh, be able to palm four coins and then do a control drop. Now, what I mean by a control drop is the ability to basically hold four coins in classic palm and drop them one at a time when you want them on demand. It's something that a lot of coin magicians uh, don't learn. Uh, and it's so important to learn how to do this because the ability, a good classic palm is like having a sixth and a seventh finger because you can hold those coins in position and still use your fingers and thumb to hold a pack of cards, shuffle, uh, pick up a glass, whatever it is. Um, so a good classic palm is very, very important, but having the ability to palm four coins and drop them one at a time opens up so many possibilities. And a great way to learn how to do this is with Sonic Squeeze by Michael Lamar. So we're going to perform that routine now and have a look at it. I want to show you something um, with a mat and more importantly, uh, with my hand. Now look, I take a piece of nothing, put it into my hand, squeeze. And if you squeeze hard enough, what happens is that uh, that piece of nothing turns into a coin. Now, I'm going to do that again for you because you might have missed it. Look, every time I squeeze, I can make a coin. That's coin number two. Let's do it again. If I take this coin and squeeze, I can turn it into a coin. All good things come in fours, which is why I can get one last coin. Now, we've got... Now, guys, tell me, isn't that super magical? I mean, what's beautiful about this is you show your hands empty. Now, I have to be honest, I do this slightly differently to Mike Lamar. I actually start off with a coin in left-hand finger palm. And I have three coins in classic palm in the right hand. And I start by, when I put the piece of dust in my hand, I use a Ramsey subtlety to hide that coin in left hand finger palm. Uh, when you're a coin magician, there's two different subtleties and people confuse the two. And it's important to understand these because it's a way of showing your hands empty even when they're not empty. Ramsey subtlety is a way of subtly showing your hand empty when a coin's in finger palm, and cap subtlety is a way of doing the same thing when a coin is in classic palm. We're gonna be looking at cap subtlety a little bit later on in this video. Now, the best way to practice doing this is to just do it over and over again. Carry four coins around with you and just put them in your palm and just practice dropping them one at a time. So you just put the four coins in your palm and you just practice dropping them 
one at a time until you can do a control drop every single time. Now, Ryland has small hands and he can do a control drop of four coins. Absolutely not a problem at all. So it's not about hand size. It's more about getting your classic palm as good as it can be. And it really just comes down to practice. But honestly, if you're going to be doing routines with multiple amounts of coins, then the important thing is you need to make sure that you're doing a really good production. Because when you're doing a coin set, you want to make sure that you're producing those coins in the, big, in the beginning in a really magical way. And honestly, although we're going to be looking at lots of different coin productions, there is no better coin production, in my opinion, than Sonic Squeeze. You don't need a table. Uh, it can be done completely mix and mingle. The angles are really great. Unless you've got somebody lying on their back looking up, then the angles are absolutely fantastic. So it's really a great uh, routine from an angles point of view. If you're thinking about social distancing, you're not using the spectator's hands. But if you do want to use the spectator's hands as you produce the coins, you can put them into their hands. And, uh, you know, there's lots of... Once you've learned Sonic Squeeze, there's lots of different variations. Jay Sankey has a, uh, a routine called Slick Splits, which is a very similar thing to Sonic Squeeze, but... He creates a splitting action as the coins are dropped and, 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 and appear. So rather than just having like an appearance of four coins, it looks like the coins are being split into each other. Either way, this is a great routine to learn a controlled drop from Classic Palm. It's called Sonic Squeeze and it's by Michael Amar. Okay, so the next little sequence uh, that I'm going to be showing you... Uh, it's basically a little routine that I've put together specifically for this video. And it's a production of two coins, followed by two different variations of Tenkai pennies. Um, and, and this is, you're probably wondering what Tenkai pennies is. Well, the best place to learn it is from David Roth's book. And, and the reason I suggest you learn Tenkai pennies is, one, it's a great little impromptu trick that you can do anytime, anywhere. But two, it allows you to really master cap subtlety and honestly when you're performing magic on a regular basis with coins like i said in the previous section you really need to master understanding cap subtlety and ramsey subtlety but you also need to understand angles now i've done videos on magic stuff in the past about angles but angle management when you're doing coin magic is so important you need to understand where the bad angles are and you need to cover and body turn based on where the bad angles are especially when you're performing in the real world and you've got people from all around you looking at what you're doing. So I'm going to have a look at this right now. We're going to have a look at this routine um, and, uh, and then I'll break down why it's so important to learn. Okay, I want you to watch this hand. Don't blink. Uh, I'm going to take a piece of nothing. In fact, a few more pieces of nothing. Pop them in my hand. Rub the back of my hand. Squeeze. And when I do, I get an American half dollar. Let me try that again. Maybe you missed it. I'll take some more nothing. Put it in my hand. Snap. When I do, I get another coin. So that's two American half dollars. Now watch. Uh, one over there one over here. Now, when I squeeze, they actually both jump over here into this hand. Maybe you missed that. I'm going to do it um, again. So the start over there. And when I squeeze, one of them jumps across. Now, let me show you the next one go. There's one over here and there's one over here. One here, one here. When I squeeze, they both go into this hand. Let's do that one final time. To be clear, you can see one in each hand. I'm going to do it as slowly. Watch. One here, one here. Now, all I have to do is squeeze. And when I do, they both go into the same hand. So let's talk about what I just did there. That's a little sequence I put together just for this video. And um, I've never performed that sequence before, but it allows me to showcase a few moves. So at the beginning, uh, the first production of a coin was Lahom Mask. Again, you can learn that. There's lots of different places you can learn these different moves from. But I'm going to recommend uh, Michael Amar's Easy to, Easy to Master Coin Magic series. It's absolutely the best video to learn a lot of these things from. Michael Amar is an amazing teacher. So, uh, And then the second part was a, uh, was a shuttle pass, which we talked about in the previous previous video. Uh, that's David Roth. Uh, sorry, not a, yeah, a shuttle pass. Um, and then I did a sequence of moves where they jump from one hand to the other. Now, the first thing that I did was a retention pass. And it's really important. So we'll talk about vanishes, vanishes in a future video. But it's really important to learn a series of deceptive vanishes when you're doing coin magic. You don't just want to be doing the same vanish over and over again. I see coin magicians who do amazing coin magic, but they just do French drop over and over again. You have to learn a lot of different ways ways of making that coin disappear. So in that case, I learned a, a retention pass. Again, a retention pass can be learned from uh, Kaufman's Coin Magic book, uh, David Roth's textbook Coin Magic, uh, Kaufman and Greenberg's, Richard Zelmanyak, anything like that. Then we went into the Tenkai Penny Seat. No, actually, then I did a click pass 
which is Michael Rubenstein's, which you can learn from his book. It's a very clever click pass. A click pass is where you apparently put two coins into your hand, but you hold one back. The particular click pass I did there was Michael Rubenstein's. Again, it's a really good idea to learn more than one click pass. And then we went into the actual Tenkai Pennies part. Now, I first learned this from David Roth's expert coin magic. And it's the whole idea of showing one coin in one hand and one coin in the other and making both coins jump into the same hand. Now, the first time I did it was with Cap Subtlety. I actually did it from Classic Palm, uh, which is the way it's taught an awful lot. The second time I did it is with Goshman Pinch or Tenkai Pinch. Now, Goshman Pinch or Tenkai Pinch is a really useful move, especially if you're doing walk around magic. And again, this comes back to understanding the angles. There's certain routines in coin magic that are more appropriate for certain situations. Anytime you're using back clipping or uh, Tenkai Pinch or Goshman Pinch or something like that, you really want to have the audience looking down at your hands. So a walk around setting is best. If you're doing something where you're lapping, obviously you want to be sitting at a table. So understanding this is really important. But basically, when you do it with Goshman Pinch, it's the same thing. The only difference is, uh, the first time I did it from Classic Palm, so I was using Cap Subtlety to hide where the coin was. But the second time I did it from Goshman Pinch, I could have my hand open. It's really important to learn both of those. You want to check out David Roth's Expert Coin Magic, check out Michael Amazizi's Master Coin Magic series and learn both different versions of the Tenkai pennies. Very important. Right, okay guys, so the next thing we're going to be looking at is a version of Coins Across. Now in the previous video I did, we covered a couple of Coins Across. We covered uh, Wing Silver, which is absolutely amazing but today I want to be talking to you about something that's a little bit more difficult and we're going to be talking about Mr. Clean Coins Across across, which in my opinion, for walk around is one of the best coins across that you can do. Now, these days, a lot of people think of Jay Sankey as not so much of a coin guy because he brings out so much stuff. But back in the day, when I first started learning about Jay Sankey, and he was publishing stuff in sort of Richard Zelmanyak and places like that, he was like a hardcore coin guy. And if you want to see some of the stuff that Jay can do, check out Revolutionary Coin Magic. I mean, the stuff that that guy does is incredible. Mr. Clean Coins Across is a three coin coins across but what's beautiful about it is there's no extras there's no gimmicks it is literally just three coins uh you have three coins they go into the hand one at a time they jump over into the other hand really that's all it is now um, there's two moves that you really need to learn when, uh, and if you're going to be a coin magician, honestly, these two moves are so important. We discussed the first one in the previous video, which is Goshman Pinch or Tenkai Pinch, um, which is the art of, that of pinching the coin between the ring finger and the mid, and the, uh, the little finger behind the hand. But what Jay did is he created a move called the pointing transfer, um, which he uses in a lot of his magic, which is a way of actually pointing from one hand to the other hand and in the action of pointing moving one coin from one hand to the other whilst getting a coin into Tenkai Pinch or Goshman Pinch. Now that is an incredibly useful thing to be able to do and uh, it kind of superseded the Tenkai Pennies move that I mentioned earlier on. It's a more natural way of doing Tenkai Pennies which is why this is following up on that particular thing because I wanted you to look at that first before you look at this. So let's have a look at a full performance of Mr. Clean Coins Across. I will tell you that I change the final uh, phase uh, and I'll tell you how I changed it in a minute but let's have a look at the full uh, the full performance okay Sarah, can you see these three coins yeah you can brilliant here's what we're going to do I want you to watch I'm going to make them jump from this hand to this hand one at a time you ready okay if I squeeze like this the first coin jumps across what do you reckon pretty good yeah I'll do it again we've got two over there one over there now watch if I just take this one and squeeze we get the second one across pretty good Yep. I'll do it one last time. You know what's going to happen. You know I'm going to make this last coin jump from over here over to here. Okay? Mm -hmm. So watch. One here, two here. If I just squeeze one final time, that's all three coins from one hand to the other. Okay, isn't that a really cool coins across? I mean, it's so clean. It really is. Um, things to note about that. So um, when Jay originally does it, uh, he holds one coin back for the first coin, like I did. Then he uses the pointing transfer for the second coin, like I did. But he actually uses the pointing transfer for the third coin as well. Now, Greg Wilson published a version of Mr. Clean Coins Across that he put in, um, 
one of his DVDs. I think it was the impromptu one. Can't remember. Off the cuff, I think it might have been. And he uses a version of Mr. Clean Coins Across. The final phase of Greg's version is what I actually use when I do this routine, which is not to do this, the, uh, the pointing transfer a second time, but instead get the coin into heel grip in the left hand. And in the action of saying, I'm not going to bring my hands together, you actually move the coin into the other hand. But because of uh, gosh, when pinch, people don't notice that. But either way, whether you learn Greg's version to learn that final phase, which you can find in Off the Cuff, available from Penguin Magic, or if you learn Mr. Clean Coins Across, which you can learn from Revolutionary Coin Magic number one, either way, it's a really important uh, routine to learn. Because Coins Across is something that laymen really get a kick out of. They really do. It's, it's such a... Um, it's it's such a magical thing. It's a little bit like ambitious card with coin with cards, right? Everybody does an ambitious card because it's such a clear plot. The sign card comes to the top of the pack over and over again. Well, the coins across is exactly the same. Coins jump from one hand to the other, and it's really important to have lots of different versions of this. And that's one of the things I want you to learn about coin magic. Just because something works in one environment, it might not work in another. If I was sitting down or uh, with people around a table, or if I was doing like a big table in a banqueting situation or if I was doing parlor. I would never do um, a routine like Mr. Coins co uh, Cleans Coins Across. But you know what? Impromptu, walk around, it's perfect. If you actually catch me walking around and you go, hey, show me a trick, there's a lot of the time that I'll say, yeah, have you got some coins I can borrow? Because this can work with any coin. So it's something that's really important to learn. So it's a, so again, it's Mr. Clean Coins Across. Learn it for the, uh, for the Goshman Pinch. Learn it for the Pointing Transfer. And uh, you, the best source is revolutionary coin magic and that's from Jay's website. Right, so we're going to be looking at another Coins Across now. As I said in the previous uh, section, uh, Coins Across is a very, very useful thing to be able to learn as a coin magician. Uh, this is very different to anything we've looked up up until this point. We're going to be looking at PDQ Coins Across by Paul Harris. Now, I think that stands for pretty damn quick. And I learned it from Super Magic. Now, I think it's also uh, taught in The Art of Astonishment, but I actually learned it from Super Magic, which is an amazing book, uh, kind of a smaller book from many, many, many years ago. Anyway, the reason I want you to learn PDQ coins across is because of the Hang Ping Chen move or the HPC move. Now, a lot, uh, you, some people might be thinking, well, what's Hang Ping Chen? Hang Ping Chen is the art of uh, having coins in each hand, sh uh, dropping, uh, sort of slamming the coins down from one hand and then slamming the coins down from the other hand. And in, the, in that action, getting one or two coins ahead. Uh, which is very, very useful. Now, in a previous video, I looked at Gallo Pitch by Lou Gallo, which is basically the same thing. However, there are a lot of advantages of learning the Hang Ping Chen or the HPC move. There are a lot of advantages. Jay Sankey has got some amazing applications. Um, uh, there's a lot of stuff that I do with the Hang Ping Chen that you couldn't do with a Gallo Pitch, uh, where I'm doing a Hang Ping Chen from, say, under a shell or under a purse or under a Nikito box. So it is a very useful thing to learn, uh, and it, it will allow you to get one coin or two coins ahead. So I'm going to do a performance of PDQ Coins Across. Once I've done the performance, we'll talk about why it's so good. I've also changed PDQ Coins Across ever so slightly, so I'll talk about how I've changed it. Uh, but let's have a look at full performance right now. Okay, so Sarah's behind the camera. Hey, Sarah. Hey. I've got four coins here. Can you see them? I can. Cool. These are American silver half dollars, and I've got four of them. I'm going to show you something kind of weird with these four coins, all right? I'm going to try and make them jump from one hand to the other. Are you ready? Okay. If I squeeze like this, there's the first one across. That's coin number one. Yeah. Not bad. Should we do it again? Yeah. Still three coins to go. Watch, if I squeeze again, now we've got a second coin across. That's coin number two. So we've got two coins gone, two coins remain. Should we do it again? Mm -hmm. Watch, if I do this, that's three coins across. Mm -hmm. Leaves us with one last coin. Watch the last one. Going, going, gone. That's all four coins. So it's such a magical routine, I'm sure you'll agree. Um, you need a table to do it on. You don't need a close-up mat. I have played around doing it in the spectator's hands, but for that Hang Ping Chen move, you really kind of do need a table. Now, there's a couple of different places that I've changed this in. The first thing is, when, when Paul Harris originally explained this, he only held one coin back. Um, so he had to hold one coin back and then and then get himself into a situation where he's holding another coin back or doing a Hang Ping Chen. I actually hold two coins back. And the technique that I use to do that is a Jeff Latter technique, which you can find in Coin Magic by Richard Kaufman. It's basically an extension of David Roth's 
way of classic palming a coin from a stack of coins, which is something that a lot of magicians do. Jeff Latter kind of took that to the next level. Um, the other way that I changed it is uh, uh, Paul Harris. I mean, I learned this years and years and years ago, but uh, Paul Harris does two Hang Ping Chen. So he does Hang Ping Chen. And then uh, with the third coin, and he does another Hang Ping Chen with the fourth coin. What I did is I do a Hang Ping Chen where I'm switching two for two. So I'm doing a two for two Hang Ping Chen, which gets me two coins ahead in the middle of the routine. So after I've shown the two coins in one hand, two coins in the other, I don't have to then do another display. I'm immediately two coins ahead. Anyway, by the by, hopefully you saw from that performance that Hang Ping Chen is a very useful move to learn. Now, in future videos on this subject, we're going to be looking at different applications of Hang Ping Chen. Um, one of the things that I've done for years and years and years is Pat Page's Coins Through Table, which he put on a trick tape video very, very many years ago by uh, Vic Pinto. And he's got a Coins Through Table uh, which uses uh, Hang Ping Chen extensively. So it's really important as a coin magician, if you want to get into the more intermediate and advanced coin magic, you've got to have a good understanding of the Hang Ping Chen move. And honestly, the best routine that I've ever found to learn this is PDQ Coins Across. So what I want you to do now is have a look at PDQ Coins Across by Paul Harris. What's the best way to learn the HPC move? Practice it over and over again. It's one of those moves that if you don't, it's very easy to learn, but it's very difficult to master. You have to do it over and over again. The timing has to be really on. If the timing isn't on, it won't look very good. It's it's meant to look, you know, you've got your hand there, which has got two coins in. You've just shown two coins uh, from this hand. And then as you put the two coins down from this hand, this hand has to move out the way. And as it moves out the way, that's when the move takes place. Anyway, any questions, let me know in the comments down below. Let's move on to the four, uh, fifth and final video. So the final routine that I want to talk to you about is Hanging Coins by David Roth. Now, I've discussed this on the channel before. Uh, basically, in essence, what Hanging Coins is, is it's a very clean way of taking three coins, making them disappear, and then having them hang in the air on skyhooks. I actually performed this on my David Roth tribute show that I did quite a few weeks ago now, when unfortunately David Roth passed away. Now, uh, Edge Grip. David was very instrumental in, in making Edge Grip really practical and accessible for all coin magicians. And since David's work on it, I mean, uh, people like Kayana Harbottle have literally just run with this move. And now there's so much you can do with it. And, and for advanced coin workers, edge grip is something that you really do need to learn. So you may as well learn it with kind of the routine that put it on its map, which is hanging coins. So I'm going to perform this for you. And then we're going to very quickly talk about edge grip and, and why it's so useful. Okay, so guys, I have four coins. Hopefully you can see these. One, two, three, four coins. These are silver American half dollars. Now I'm going to try and make these coins disappear and then hang them on a skyhook right here in the air. You see there's invisible skyhooks. Uh, you can get one of these as a magician when you know where to look. I'm going to hang it right there. And when I've got a skyhook, I can actually take coins and hang them onto the skyhook, which sounds ridiculous, but let me show you what this looks like. Uh, I'll start with this coin right here, which is coin number one. All I have to do is squeeze, and when I do, it becomes invisible. Now, when the coin's invisible, I can hang it right there on the skyhook. That leaves us with, uh, with three coins. Now, here's the thing. I can do this with each and every one of these coins. That's not a problem. But what you have to understand is you can only do this when the coins are invisible. You can't take, like, a real coin and hang it onto the skyhook. That's not going to work. It's why you don't see coins floating around all over the place. That's never going to happen. But if you take an uh, invisible coin, squeeze it. You can turn it into a, uh, take an invisible coin, squeeze, you can turn it into an invisible coin. You can then hang it right there on the sky hook. That leaves us with two coins, okay? Let me do it again with this one. Watch the coin, don't blink for a second. If you blink, you'll miss that coin, become invisible. And I can hang that one right there. So I've now got three coins right there on the sky hook. Watch, if I want to bring them back, I take the three coins, throw them up in the air, catch. And that's one, two, three, four coins, visible once again. 
So that is hanging coins. It's a beautiful routine because your hands appear completely empty at every single step of the way. And yet you're making these coins disappear. The displays are beautiful. And I'm, I'm telling you right now, that final moment where you've got one coin held at the tips of your fingers and you grab three invisible coins and, and catch them and they reappear, it's amazing. There's a lot of magicians uh, that have tried to actually solve the final coin problem. A lot of people have actually done a really good job with it. But for me personally, I actually like the moment where the three coins come back and not making that final coin disappear. But that's just personal preference. Now, when I talked about this move before, Edge Grip before, on the David Roth tribute show, I had a few people in the comments and they were, I, I, I made a point. I said, a lot of people think Edge Grip is angly, but it's not as long as you can control the eye level of the people looking at the routine. And I had a few people in the comments go, Craig doesn't know what he's talking about. That means it's angly. Well, no, it's not. It's about audience management. And what I mean by that is edge grip in of itself is absolutely fine to do in any situation. I do hanging coins, walk around. You don't need a table. Um, you don't need extra coins. You don't need gimmicks. It's anytime, anywhere. What you have to be aware of is the eye level of the people watching you. So in other words, if you're doing this and everyone is standing up, and they're all therefore at the same eye level, roughly. It doesn't have to be exact. Like if you've got short person and tall person, it's not an issue. Um, then that's fine. If everyone's standing up, I can literally do this routine here and wherever they're looking from, they won't see anything. The only person who'll see something is if somebody's on the floor looking up, which is why they have to be all at a similar eye level. So in other words, if there's people sitting down at a table watching this and there's people standing up, edge grip isn't going to work. Likewise, if I'm sitting down at a table and everyone else is sitting down, Edge grip is absolutely brilliant. So it's not that it's angly, it's being aware of the angles that you have and making sure you work with it. But that's a lesson that as you start to become uh, more of a coin magician and learning more about intermediate and advanced coin magic, one of the things that you will need to understand over and over again is the importance to understand angles and that different routines will work in different scenarios and which routine will work best in which place, regardless edge grip is a great utility move that you really should learn and hanging coins is a fantastic application of it you can learn it from david ross the expert coin magic or michael amar's easy to master coin series so there you have it guys that is another coin magic special on five by five let me know down below what you thought of my trick selection uh, i think these are these are five great tricks that really help you learn more about coin magic and, and when you learn these five there's so many other things that you can do now we'll be doing another video on this again in the future let me know what you think in the comments down below i love feedback and also if you uh, want to see more videos like this subscribe to the channel like the video and i'll be back again tomorrow with a talk magic i'll see you then thanks very much for watching my name's craig from magic tv